Hey everybody, it's Jeremy from DSLR Pros and I'm very happy to have with us Michael Lee from DJI who has brought with him the new DJI Matrice 30T. Michael, thanks so much for coming. Yeah, no problem. I'm really excited to introduce you the new product and the new controller and some of the features that this M30 has to offer. What are some of the features that people are so enthused about for this craft? Yeah, I think with this aircraft right here, it's kind of a mixture between the M2EA and the Matrice 300, kind of like a hybrid. I would say the portability and the features, the capabilities that it has, it's for its size, it's very, very impressive. And on top of that, we've added a new controller, the RC Plus. I think people are really excited about that too. So with these two combinations, I think people are very, very happy to see this product being released by DJI. Yeah, I mean, you guys took like the best parts of the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced and the M300. I mean, you put them together, they had a baby. This is what it would look like. Absolutely. Can you get into a little bit of some of the tech that the M30, especially the M30T, offers? Yeah, so some of the technology, as you can see in the payload right now, uh, similar to the H20, H20T, this is the M30T. So you have a zoom, the thermal, the wide, and a laser rangefinder. So those are the same exact features, but we've basically been able to minimize it and put it into the size of an M30. So the same resolution, same radiometric capabilities, same smart tracking. Correct, so a really popular one is the smart tracking and then the 200 times zoom, the 640 by 512 thermal is also on there too. It, one difference I've, I've seen is that the way it stores, right? You don't need that rubber cover as you did before with each 20. Yes, previously we did have a, like a plastic case right here you'd put on. Uh, no longer do you have a case, so it's pretty easy for storage or quick deployment. Uh, so let's say you want to put in the case, you quickly put it up and when you're ready to deploy, you just put it down and it's ready, good to go. And we've also eliminated the payload calibration or sometimes I've seen if it's doing its dance, your take off and your payload's all wacky. No longer will you have that issue. Uh, this payload right here does not need to be uh, do its calibration movements in order for it to work properly. Okay, so it's quicker to deploy because you can just flip that down. Yes. It, it's quicker to take off, there's no calibration needed and, and conversely it's quicker to put away because you just, I mean, you do that and you're done, right? Yeah, it's and pretty simple, pretty well, simple. So, so that's gonna be very impressive and very useful for especially our public safety users where in an emergency situation, you know, every second counts. So even shaving off a couple seconds of taking off the cover or however many seconds that calibration dance does can make a big difference. Can we take a look at this all uh, unfolded? Yeah. Okay. If you wanna do the honors. All right, <laughs> so let's see. Okay, so immediately I can tell it's, it's easier to, to open this up than it was with the M300, there's, there's less resistance on the arms, they're coming out one-handed actually. So we've gotten rid of the, the previous M300, the twist and turn, as you can see now we have the uh, button lock system. So now you're able to basically push a button down, one-handed and turn it and then lock it, the button will basically jump up and you're able to see that it's locked. We've also uh, added a new battery lock system. Let's take a look. Back. Okay, so, so what do we have here? Previously with the M300, it was a, about a plastic uh, tab basically to keep both the batteries in. So it was a one step fail safe. This actually has two, so two of its own locking mechanism. So if there was ever a failure on this end of the battery side, the other is not impacted at all. So you're able to actually release batteries and take them out one handed and then change it back. And then on top of that, uh, this makes hot swapping a lot easier. With this, it's almost impossible to accidentally kill uh, the power by taking out both batteries because this one is locked while this one is being taken out and maneuvered. Tell me a little bit about some of the safety features. I see a ton of sensors. Yeah, so it has some of the same features as the M300. It has the six obstacle avoidance sensors, uh, has the three propeller emergency landing. So this was something we carried over from the M300 where if you have one propeller basically not functioning correctly, the aircraft can still land itself with three propellers. If an operator is flying and they spot a missing person or, or a suspect, can you tell me about the, the smart pin tracking? Yeah, so let's say a suspect throws something or tries to get rid of something, you can continue following the suspect while dropping a pin and with those pins come GPS coordinates so you're able to transfer that over to any working parties that you have assisting and basically track down what you're looking for with those pins and you can drop an infinite amount of pins and smart tracking which basically you can either draw a box and that box is gonna go around like a vehicle or a building or a person and it's gonna try to copy that pixels and its algorithm and follow it 
Uh, so that's a great tool we've carried over from the M300 to the M30. Do you happen to know the, the operational range, how far it can go? Yes, so now using OcuSync 3, our advertised distance is 15 kilometers. Different things are gonna vary, obviously buildings or objects and signals, so, uh, but that is our OcuSync 3, we're using our new algorithm uh, with the controller and the aircraft, you're able to get that 15 kilometers, so very impressive. Yeah. Yes. Let's, let's take a look again at this um, payload here. There's quite a number of cameras on the payload itself, but I'm also noticing some cameras up here. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on up here? Yeah, so right here is the FPV camera, first person view. So we've improved it, we've brought that over. It's not a new concept, we've had it before in our previous Enterprise aircraft, our Matrice, Inspire. Uh, with this FPV camera, we've actually done quite a bit of improvement. It works better now in low light. So essentially before sunrise, start toward end of sunset, you're able to use that FPV and you're able to see. So uh, this is a great tool because whenever you're using the aircraft and you're doing inspections, everyone knows you're not just always looking straight forward, you're looking to the left, you're looking to the right, whatever you may be inspecting. I think a good use case I'm thinking of is when you're doing a potentially a bridge inspection and you're looking to the left, but you have your drone facing to the end of the tunnel and the beginning of the tunnel and you're able to anytime switch that camera view back and forth and get your situational awareness and orientation to set yourself up for success. Are you able to switch between the thermal and the visible cameras and see them at the same time? Yes, yeah, so you're able to do split view. So you're able to have your thermal on one side and then your visual camera on the other side, kind of helping with your orientation and kind of seeing sometimes when we're staring at a thermal image for such a long period of time, you don't remember what you're looking at in the first place. So I think with the dual, you're able to see, hey, this is how it looks like in real life. This is how it looks like on a thermal reading scale. Awesome. And, and are both of those views recorded at the same time? Yes, correct. That's very cool. So we've spoken a lot about the M30. What about the RC Plus? This thing looks much different than the previous models. <laughs> Absolutely. So the customer asked and we've given. Uh, people wanted a bigger screen. Uh, previously, sometimes people had a hard time seeing in the daytime or nighttime. It wasn't bright enough. Uh, so we've basically added a brighter screen, a bigger screen. This is the new 7-inch screen, uh, 1200 CD M2 brightness. So really impressive with that. And we've also added it to be waterproof. So it is IP rated 54. That was a big concern. People always asked, why is the drone waterproof, but the controller's not? The guy's out there flying it at the same time. And on top of that, we've also made it pretty simple for any external, internal batteries. With it combined, you have a total of six hours flight time. Well, wow. so is that hot swappable? Yes. Correct, so in theory, if you're just always hot swapping the WB37s, you'll never need to charge your controller. So yes, very hot swappable. And you won't lose connection with your craft, meaning you can just pick back up and keep going. Yes. And those are customizable buttons for different functions? Yes, correct. So you can use that to pan your gimbal, you can use that to switch between cameras, drop a pinpoint. So really, it's all the pilot's discretion, make them feel comfortable when they're flying and easy to do the job. We've added these new antennas, they're able to basically be removable at any time. So if they, have, if they break, you don't need to send the controller in, you're able to just replace the antenna on the go. Oh, so wow. you can actually have backups of these in your case. <laughs> That's great. And then on top of here, we've added micro SD, USB-A, HDMI, USB-C, so all sorts of features. Can you tell me a little bit more about DJI Pilot 2 and what's different with this new version? Yeah, so with the new DJI Pilot 2, the first thing that comes to my mind is that it's capable with Flight Hub 2. And on top of that, we've just cleaned up the interface a lot more with the new buttons, the new software kind of helps make it a lot easier and more accessible to the pilot. You mentioned Flight Hub 2. Tell me about that. Yeah, so Flight Hub 2 is a cloud-based drone management platform. So if you can think about it, when you have your pilots and your sensor operators out in the field, there has to be a logistics or an air boss behind to make sure that all operations are going smooth. So with this tool, you're able to track and basically see what your aircraft are doing out in the field, what they're doing, why they're doing what they're doing. So you're able to see battery status, you're able to see live streaming, you're able to see 2D mapping, and you're able to coordinate, and you're even able to plan missions for them. So if you were to plan a waypoint mission, you're able to plan it on your computer, and you're able to transfer that directly to the drone. So we've talked about a lot of the features of the M300 that have been brought into this smaller form factor. Can you tell me a little bit about what the M300 can do that this can't? 
Yeah, so the M300 is still our flagship drone. It does take about two minutes to fully deploy, so that's, it's losing its portability. But by sacrificing that portability, you're having this larger aircraft that can have up to nine kilograms payload weight. So on top of that, you're able to have a total of three payloads, uh, two at the bottom, one on the top. One thing that the M300 does is the, it has the ability to do dual operator mode with, the, with their RC. Is that still the case with the M30? Yeah, that's a good question. So on, on the M30, you're able to use the RC Plus for an operator and then also a sensor operator. And in the future, we're gonna update the controller for this controller to work with the M300 so you can also do dual operator with the new RC Plus on the M300. Oh wow, so you can upgrade your M300 to work with the new RC Plus. Yes. That's gonna be great. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the DJI dock. Tell me about this thing. So the DJI dock is first of its kind uh, solution that we're introducing drone in the box solution. So there are gonna be three series with the M30. We're gonna have an M30, which is without the thermal, M30T with the thermal, and then we're gonna have an M30 dock. So that specific aircraft is gonna be meant for that dock. So it's gonna be able to charge wirelessly. You're not gonna be able to take the batteries out. And it's basically gonna be able to deploy quickly and basically without an operator there. Well, that's a lot to talk about. A lot of information, very exciting. Thank you, Michael, I appreciate you being no here. Problem. Thanks no so problem. much. And thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, obviously, there's a lot to learn about the M30 and the M30T. We're very excited about it, hope you are as well. Let us know what your favorite feature is in the comments below. To learn more, reach out to DSLR Pros at sales at dslrpros.com, visit our website at dslrpros.com, or give us a call. I'm Jeremy, thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time.